So, Jason, we got a lot of interest from your session last week where you talked about the digital divide, uh, where you knocked out that application very quickly using JSON data. Yeah, so it was, a, it was an interesting session that we did last week where uh, the JSON data that I used was primarily around GeoJSON, so geographical polygons to represent the different countries around the world. And we use the, the, a heat map approach to show um, the gender parity around different countries uh, across the world as part of that conversation. So that was really interesting. So Jason, I think that gives us uh, enough to get kick-started today. I'd like to welcome everybody to Thursdays with Franco where we talk around autonomous, Apex, Oracle Cloud infrastructure and associated elements. Uh, today's session will be recorded for the first 10 to 15 minutes, um, after which we will actually stop the recording and we'll unmute the sessions and uh, open it up to broad Q&A. Um, as we highlighted um, last week, we had Jason Lowe, taking us through a finished Apex application that was based upon JSON. Because we had so much interest in uh, hearing about JSON from JSON, um, we thought we'd uh, open it up and actually take a couple of, let's actually say some steps on why do people consider JSON. And we've got Chris Spearings, who's spending a bit of time talking through that. Welcome, Chris. Hey, Franco, how are you going? I'm good. Thank you for reaching out and saying, hey, given what you're doing, you'd like to uh, generously share your journey. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, um, I'm a, a, I suppose, a long-term Apex developer. Um, and recently, uh, I've been helping, as you know, with, uh, with a project we're doing internally with the Oracle volunteers where we're building a, an Apex application. And that's involved... Uh, a little bit of JavaScript and a little bit of JSON. So I thought maybe we can have a bit of a discussion around it. And, you know, I, I know uh, Jason with an A was talking about JSON last week. And um, I thought maybe we'll just maybe have a session where we back it up a little bit and make it a little bit simpler, um, just so people who maybe haven't seen JSON before can understand some of the basic concepts and then how they might use it in their applications. So... Um, I've got a, little, uh, a couple of slides that maybe I'd like to talk through in the very beginning yes, please. to set the foundation of what uh, JSON is, and then um, we'll go and have a look at some, uh, some things. So this is just a slide called Intro to JSON. So, you know, what is JSON? JSON is just really a, a string representation of data. It was originally developed for JavaScript but it's used by all languages now. So you can think of things like Java and Python, they all support JSON. And it's really become the de facto standard uh, these days for data interchange. And we're gonna have a case today and that's the simple JavaScript objects. So this little guy on the screen here, that's a, a JavaScript object. Um, and it's the way we work with data when we're programming in JavaScript. And in this example, I've got an object that's called person. Uh, that object has two properties and they're represented as uh, key value pairs. So the first property um, has a key of first name and it has a value of Chris. The second property has a, last, uh, has a key of last name and has a value of Spearings. This object uh, only exists inside that JavaScript instance. So the question would be, you know, how do I share this object? You know, how do I share the data within this object? And maybe how do I load this data uh, into this object in JavaScript? And that's where the answer is JSON. So JSON is just a textual, textual representation of this data. And the uh, JavaScript uh, program can easily convert this object into that text string. And we do this by a method that's uh, it's a funny name. It's called stringify. So what we're doing inside that JavaScript program is we're saying, get this object and turn it into a string. And you can see there the string that's created. Um, and that's our, that's our JSON. On the other end, if we want to get a JSON string and we want to use it inside our JavaScript program, we do something called a parse where we get that string and we turn it back into an object. 
So this working with um, objects and JSON in JavaScript is, is a very simple process. Um, and, it's, and it's basically the, the core function of uh, JavaScript and JSON. So in a nutshell, JavaScript uses objects. Uh, we use JSON to save or store that object outside of our program. We can convert the object to a string, and then we can also convert the JSON back into a JavaScript object. So this leads to a couple of questions. How can JavaScript running in a browser store this information? And the answer is that we send it, send it back to the server and the server can work out what it's gonna do with it. It can store it somewhere. How can JavaScript running in Apex store information? And the answer to that is we can just store that in the database and it's perfect. So if we look inside the Oracle database, um, what can we do with JSON in the, in, inside Oracle? So JSON is just text. So as far as the database is concerned, we can store that in any column that can store text. So think of uh, Varchart2. Uh, for 12C and up, we can store that in a 32K uh, size in a Varchart2. We could store it as a lob if we wanted to. So we've got a lot of JSON data, we can store that in a lob. And we can make sure that JSON is, is well formed uh, by using this JSON check constraint on that column. And then for 21C is when it gets a lot more fun because with 21C, Oracle has introduced a native JSON data type in Oracle and we can do a lot more with improved performance in 21C. So any program can store or retrieve JSON in Oracle and use it. Uh, Oracle can use JSON data in queries so we can run SQL statements or use PL SQL against that JSON data. An Oracle can also generate JSON just from regular SQL queries on relational data. So we can get, you know, tables uh, with columns, we can write queries against it, and um, we can uh, output that as JSON. So let's have a quick look at JSON in the database. So I'll just share. And the thing which is really exciting about this whole JSON capability, you know, whether it's um, in the database or a bit of Python, or et cetera, you can add and sub subtract those dictionary elements you talked about, like you had a first name, last name. We could add address. We could even add another nested JSON in there. That's the, that's the real flexibility you get. Yeah, that's right. So, you, you know, think about maybe you were, um, you'd written a little application and you might be storing someone's name in there. And then your boss comes along and goes, I want you to add something to this application really quickly. And that might involve, you know, traditionally a lot of work, but if you're talking, you know, JavaScript and JSON, it's quite simple. You just add that new object yeah. in there, the JSON, you know, updates to represent that, that data. Um, so I'm looking in the SQL workshop uh, inside just this little um, workspace I've got. I've only got one table in there and this table's called JSON test because that's what we're going to be using today. It's got three columns. Uh, it's just got a primary key, which is just, you know, a synthetically generated uh, with a sequence. I've got a name, uh, a column called name, which is probably a bit of a dumb name for a, a column, but there it is, name. It's a Varchar2100. And then I've got a column called JSON data and that's a Varchar2 4000. And if I look at just the constraints I've got on there, you can just see the typical ones. So I've just got um, a constraint here called JSON data is JSON. And all that does is when I go to insert um, text into this JSON data uh, column, it just makes sure it's well formed in the, in the, um, the format that's expected for JSON. That's if great. I go, if I go into my SQL workshop and I'm going to run some SQL commands, I can just do a so I'm just going to select all columns from JSON test. And in my output here, I can see um, I've got this primary key. I've got a, a field called name or a column called name. And then I've got JSON data in here. Um, if I want to select it, so I can just select name. I'm going to just give this 
total annulus. And now I can start selecting. Uh, if I want to drill into that JSON data, I can use uh, a few ways of doing it, but I can use a dot notation, which is something that's familiar to people who develop in JavaScript. So I just uh, refer to that column and then let's refer to the name. And we run this query. And now you can see that, even though I've called the name, I'll call it JSON name so it doesn't get confusing on that again. So this query has selected um, this column called name, which I had in my, uh, my table, but now it's also looked into that JSON data and it's looked for a key called name and it's um, extracted that key dot name out. And I can also, that I have one called, uh, I think I had one called fruit, some of these. Let's see what this does. All right, so you can see I've also extracted that key value pair out of fruit and fruit happens to be an array. And we're gonna look at that a little bit later. But so this is some of the power of JSON. I can also use that in a predicate. So Chris, while you're actually typing this up, it was interesting when you had the original representation of JSON data that yeah. you had different formats already there, such that what you've got here actually takes care of actually navigating into that into that, yeah. that one table with all the yeah. different table structures. So that's interesting. Yeah. So here I have limited um, my result set back to... Um, I'm looking at all the table and then I'm, I'm filtering on JSON uh, data dot name equal to Chris. And I've just pulled out, you know, that JSON name and fruit. So that's some of the, that's some of the power of, um, you know, using JSON inside Oracle. You can mix um, JSON with relational data. You can use regular SQL statements to drill into that. It's a really big topic. There's a, there's a, a lot you can go through um, with JSON. Or maybe in the future, Franco, we can, we can drill into a bit more advanced stuff. But let's, we, sh we should just go and have a bit of a look now at a little application I've written um, that's gonna maybe uh, explore some of this, you know, how to create JSON data. Um, and so over here, I've created an application in my workspace. And this is just a simple demonstration of um, how to create JSON data and, and maybe how you can use it. <clears throat> so this, um, this page on, uh, in my developer here, I've created a number of items on this page. So the first item I've got, I've given it um, P1 name or page one name, it's a text field. I've got a date field as well with a date picker. I've got a checkbox group and it's called fruit and checkbox group allows me to pick multiple selections. And I've got a display only um, item on this page and it's JSON string. And what I'm gonna do with that JSON string is I'm gonna um, populate that or, or, or format that to the JSON representation of a few things in here. Um, so as you, um, I suppose, start using uh, Apex, you're going to, find out about things called dynamic actions. And they're, they're nifty little things that allow me to do, uh, run JavaScript on um, in my client and very easily um, put some advanced functionality in my application. And so what I've done is I've put a button on this page and that button is called submit. And you can see here that it's a, it's a button. And I've assigned a dynamic action to this button so that when I click on it, so there's an event that says, if I click on this button, um, the button name is submit. I'm going to execute um, these dynamic actions. And so the first dynamic action I've got is to execute some JavaScript. And then I'm gonna execute some server-side code. And then I'm just gonna set some values on my page. This execute JavaScript, um, what it's gonna do, it's going to create a JavaScript object that's empty. 
So I'm going to create a JavaScript object called preferences, and I'm going to say this is an empty object. And then I'm going to get the values of those items on the page. And so Apex makes this really easy. Um, they've got um, an API that lets you grab those values of those items and you can assign it to a JavaScript variable. And I'm going to do that for each of them. So, so for the text field, I'm going to get the value and then I'm going to get the value of the date. And then I'm going to get the value of that um, checkbox group, which is fruit. And here I'm going to just assign that preference with those key value pairs uh, to those things that I've collected. And then I'm going to convert that to a JSON string. So this is how simple it is to create JSON in JavaScript. I just say this object here, let's just create a string, assign it to a value, and that's it, all good. Um, we've so got some just, debug just, stuff in here, yeah? Just for the audience, so last week we had Jason Lowe show us what was easy to auto-generate out of the box using native Apex. And to, today, what Chris Spearings is showing us is the thing that's really cool about Apex is while Apex will take you so far, if you want to do some additional capabilities, like something in JavaScript, Apex makes it very easy to mix and match what you want to do in JavaScript with what you can do um, automatically out of Apex. And here, Chris has created a few of these columns on the, or fields on the Apex form. Um, those columns are, you know, preferences.name, preferences.date, and now we're starting to turn them into a JSON, uh, JSON string using some of these Apex things. And Chris, I, I rudely interrupted you. You were just about to talk about the, you know, given if we're not sure we're going to get it totally right from the beginning, you've got this yeah. debug capability. Yeah, we do. So we have debug capability both in the database server on Apex and also in the client. And the way the development team has gone about doing that, um, if anyone's done any JavaScript before, this line here will be very familiar to them, the old console.log. And so um, what you can do in, in JavaScript is you can write to the console, and we'll have a look at that in a little while. You can write anything you want. What the, um, the Apex team have done is they've, got, they've introduced this um, library of functions called Apex Debug. And one of those uh, libraries is around logging. And what that does is it allows us to, um, to write information to the console so we can just see what's happening in our application. So in this instance, I've set, uh, I've grabbed this item, you know, P1 name, I've assigned it to a variable and I just wanna just make sure that that's worked right. So I'm just gonna print it out to the console. Uh, and I've done that all the way through it. So I've got Apex debug log date and then Apex debug log of fruit. So hopefully on the console, I'll see these come along. And if I get it wrong, um, you know, this can help me debug it. We do the same thing on the server side and I'll, I'll have a look at that in a minute, but we'll come back to this um, very soon. The second step is after I've created that object and I've created that JSON string, uh, I wanna do something with it. So I wanna put this in the database. So I've got my next step after my submit button is clicked, First thing I've done is collected those uh, JavaScript items. The next thing I wanna do is put it in the database. So I've created this database um, code and here is just a simple insert statement into the database. And I'm inserting, I'm saying insert in JSON test. And these are the columns I'm gonna insert into name JSON data. And I'm gonna put these um, items in there. So name, which is something I collected from the form. I just wanted just to do that, just to show that we can, we can mix and match regular stuff with JSON. And here's a JSON string I created um, in my JavaScript code. And just, I put this in there because we're gonna talk a little bit about looking at the network latency. So I've told this thing after you've done this insert statement, just hang around for two seconds, have a little sleep, don't do anything. Uh, and then you're all done. You wouldn't normally put that in your code, by the way. Uh, that's just to slow it all down. Um, I, I, the other thing about I, tend, I put it in there and then I tell my boss I can make it go faster. 
Oh, that's the old one, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you put in a you put in a, a loop of uh, uh, one to ten thousand uh, with a sleep in there, and then when your boss comes back and asks you to to make it go a bit faster, you can uh, you can just change the the loop and say, "Look at that, boss." Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I typically use the increment, and that would actually use <laughs> CPU cycles as well. So uh, I do performance tuning as well as latency. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> we digress. <laughs> but, so Let's the other thing. Going. The other thing you'll notice about this um, uh, this uh, action that we're doing after we click the submit button. So this is the server side code. There's, um, I've got some options about what to do if I hit an error. So I'm saying, should I stop execution if this hits an error? And I've got that set to yes. And then I've got uh, wait for result and I've got that set to yes as well. So it's gonna execute and it's gonna wait for the result. I can turn that off if I want to. And what that'll do is that'll fire in the background and we're just not gonna wait for it. So I'll just leave that on. The final step of this is after I've uh, entered these things into a field and I've clicked the submit button, what I wanna do is just clear out those, those items. So I, you know, I wanna clear out name, date and fruit. And that's all I've done. I've just said, after we've done that, the last step we're gonna do is just clear these items so that the form will come back empty again. So that's all good. Let's have a look at what the application looks like. Very, very simple. Um, I've got a, uh, a text field here for name. I've got a date field, date picker. And then I've got this checkbox group with just a little list of values with fruit in it. I've got this read only uh, item on the page, which is empty at the moment. It's called JSON string. So what we want to do is build up a JSON string depending on what we enter into here. So Let's enter a name, Tom. Let's enter a date. Let's just pick a date from our date picker. And let's pick some fruit for Tom, a banana and a pear. And we wanna see what that looks like. So we click on submit. Here is the um, JSON string that it's created. And in the background, this has also gone along and inserted into the database. So let's try and find Tom in there. Let's hope it's worked. There it is. There it is. Isn't there twice? But I've done this before. Well, so, let's, can, can you go in and put? Can you go in and put in, say, Helen? Helen. And, yep. Yeah, let's put in uh, the today's date. And can you pick uh, apple? Let's pick all the fruit: apple, banana, pear, strawberry. Hit submit. Bang, and let's go have a look at SQL. There it is. That's simple cool. as that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's nice and simple. Um, and, and it's funny, I just, I made this demo up because we're going to talk a little bit about debugging, right? we? And so I happened to make this little demo up because I thought this is a great way to show debugging and it's turned into a little bit of a, a JSON fest, but that's, that's all good. Um, so, so let's have a, let's have a little bit of a chat about debugging. So we spoke a little bit um, around debugging on the client side with this package called this JavaScript package called apex.debug.log. So we talked about that. We're going to have a look at that in a minute. The other thing that I've also done in this database code is the first line um, of my database code has got an apex underscore debug um, API call on it with a message uh, uh, procedure. And what I'm doing there is I'm just, you know, again, as I'm developing this application, I might wanna just keep track of what's going on, what I'm doing, what are the values I'm passing in. So I've just got a little message to myself that I wanna be able to look at and I'm saying, I'm storing JSON data. Um, this is a formatted string. So I'm saying uh, storing JSON data, formatted string for formatted string. And it's just, this is just a way of writing it. So it's going to replace that first percent S there with that value of JSON string. The second percent and, S. Can you just string. copy that, copy that for me? And after yeah. the insert, put another one in there. Um, and let's just put in, um, uh, Jason Lowe is cool. In here? <laughs> yeah, just put Jason What's it going to do? It's gonna, is that going to, should I put that in if we throw an exception or just? Uh... Just, just, just so we can see how 
Jason Lowe is cool. Um, yeah, and if you want to use, yeah, get rid of those. If, if you want those things, they're fine, but we don't need them. Just so people can see this is real. Yeah. So this, uh, so this is work. It's, not, so, real. it's okay. not real at all. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. We're going to have a little bit of a sleep. I've left that in there because we're going to have a, a, a look at that a bit later. Um, okay. And we better keep moving along because I think some of the audiences are going asleep. So okay, let's keep let's keep rocking because we've got to get to the fun bit yet. Um, so anyway, let's have a look and let's keep going. Um, I want to show you debugging on the um, in Chrome because I think if you're beginning JavaScript, uh, if you're beginning to play with JavaScript, then the Chrome debugger is where you really want to learn a little bit. So in Chrome, we've got a Chrome debugger and we get to that, I think on Windows, I'm a Mac user, so on Windows it's something like F12 or something, but I'm just opening the developer toolbar here um, and we can see my developer toolbar. Um, wow, there's this a number looks of, complicated. It's not, it gets really simple. So there's a few things here. Um, we can, first of all, look around on the page. I'm not gonna talk about that today. We'll come back to that another time. We've got this console I mentioned before, and I'm just gonna clear that. And what I can do is write things out. You know how I was writing things out to um, the console earlier? Yeah. I can, as a debugger, as I'm debugging, I can write things out. So you remember I put some um, uh, some lines of code in there. So I had a, the first line was hello world. And then I had a line yeah. of code that said, print the name out of that, that item. I'm doing some things with a date picker there and it's a little bit chatty. So it's putting a lot of information out. Here's that array I grabbed. So I can see everything, you know, that I wanted to put in there has printed up on the screen. This has really helped me debug it. We could go a little bit further and this is where, it, this is where the JavaScript debugger uh, becomes really good. We click on sources. We click on sources, then we can see the actual JavaScript actually in our page, the stuff that we've created. And we do that by going, the name of my page is called Chrome Debug. Um, and there's the page itself. If I scroll down here, I can see this code that I've written in that dynamic action up here. This is the dynamic action. So I've got the first line is hello world. And I can see that in my Chrome debugger. So what I can do, let's set a breakpoint. So I've clicked on here, I've created a breakpoint. And now I'm going to um, start debugging my code because I've got something that's going wrong that I don't understand. I so the whole idea here is you can see your code, <clears throat> your JavaScript code executing step by step and yeah. you can see the variables you've created and you can see what, what the variables are holding. Yes, exactly. So, so anyone who's done any sort of debugging in the past, um, you know, a lot of um, environments have a debugger and this is really how we can debug uh, JavaScript and we can do it, That's we great. can do it live. So we can see here, I set this breakpoint. Um, I've, I've clicked on the submit we hit that line of code and it's seen the breakpoint. And so it stopped the execution and it says paused in debugger. And if I look at, I can see the lines of code I've got. And over here, I can see variables. So I've got um, variables that are in this scope. And this scope is really this little block of code. And you can see things you might notice, things that I've already um, talked about before. So I've got like a date, I've got fruit, I've got person name, I've got P1 date value. So those sort of things. So we're going to look at these and these are going to get populated as we step through the code. I can also watch things so I can add something that I might be particularly interested in. So what did I have a, I don't know what you call person, didn't I? What did I have just person? Yeah. I don't know why it's doing that. It says not available. Oh, preferences, isn't it? Sorry. Yeah, preferences, oh. sorry. It was your, yeah. So I can see there, it says preferences undefined. That kind of means that that doesn't have any value, but let's see what happens as we go through. So um, these buttons up here, let me uh, control what's going on. I can hit 
uh, play, which will resume the script execution. And if I hit another breakpoint, then it'll stop. I can step over a function. This is probably one we're going to use a fair bit. So let's just click this and let's say step over the function. So the first thing we did was we called console.hello world, and that's the thing that's printed out. And then we get up to the bit where we're going to set preferences to an empty object. Um, so I've done that. And now I can see preferences is an object and it's empty. And let's just step through these things. So person name has been set. I call apex.item.get value and I can see the person names has been set. I can see that also down here because I'm watching yeah. that variable. Let's step over this one. We'll just step through these. So I can see that I've grabbed date value from, from that apex form. I've created a JavaScript date here as well. And now I've got another debug line. Let's just keep going through. So I'm setting fruit. Fruit is undefined, but let's execute that. Now we can see that it's been set. There's an array, there's an array with one element in it called banana. You can see up here on my page, I've got banana there. So that's, that's all cool. And we just go through and we're starting to build this object up now. So we can see that preferences has now got a, a key value pair in there called Chris, name of Chris. Step through it again. I've, I've set date. Dates appeared there. And now I'm going to set fruit. There we go. So we built that, um, that JavaScript object up. Then we're going to assign that to a JSON string. And we can see what the string looks like. And we're away. So great. So now I can hit play and we're all off. So that's really what it was about, Franco. It was just really giving people, letting people know that, that Chrome has a debugger and it's really great for debugging your JavaScript that you're running in Apex. And can you just click on view debug? Because we didn't see the, um, the Apex oh, yeah. debug thing. Yeah, okay. So in here. And then we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Let me just turn, oh, let me go back to the console. Oh, actually, I was gonna get rid of that. I can also enable debug here and debug the stuff you're talking about, Franco, that, that we're talking about that had um, that stuff that's gonna be set on the server side. Um, I'll just need to reload my page. And Submit. Let's have, see what happens if we view the debug. Oh, a minute. Maybe that's because it hadn't finished executing just yet. Yeah, you may have to re. Oh, yeah. Let me just reload it because I had that, that little pause in there, which maybe slowed us right down. Yeah. So you've actually shown us a lot today. You've introduced yeah. JSON. You've shown us what's possible with SQL. Uh, you then showed us how you can use and build an Apex app um, with fields that are then creating JSON, that JSON is being stored again. You then showed us how to do um, some actual debugging um, in JavaScript, and you showed us what it took to also um, get that Java, that debugging available there. Yeah. And, and here it is here in the- Yeah, in the so here Apex it is. Screen. I wasn't showing the correct window. So that, um, that database um, uh, process I was running, you can see that here is a running as an Ajax plugin. And if I click on a view yeah. identifier, this is all the, the debug information that Apex the development team put in there. So there's a lot of information in here, but you can see here, um, this is the code block I was running. And then um, you can see that message I originally put in here, storing JSON data, and that's the yeah. JSON data. And then you can see here, JSON low is cool. How, how great is that? What, what a great way to finish.